Uh, we had a matrix like this. It was, again, on Tuesday. On Tuesday, we had a matrix like this a week ago. And for that matrix, we computed, we did a full, I mean, we did a complete uh, spectral analysis with the characteristic polynomial. And we found two eigenvalues. One of them was 5, one of them was 2. And we found two associated eigenvalues. One of them was this one, and the other one was 1, 2, 4. Again, that's, this is the information from last week. If I'd like to see the diagonal or semi-diagonalization for this for this matrix A, all I have to do again, I have to combine this in the right places. So I build my P matrix, which consists of my eigenvectors as columns. Or if you want to see the full complete look of it, that's the matrix 1, 1, 5, 2, 25, and 4. This vector is the first column, and this vector is the second column. And my diagonal matrix, which consists of the eigenvalues on, as entries on diagonals, 5 and 2, is my diagonal matrix D. Our earlier general considerations justify that, in this case, product AP will be the same as the product PD. Because if I just repeat those argument, that argument a little bit here, it means that if I multiply AP, like this, that's my P matrix, I have to multiply every column in the column in this P matrix, like this, because x1 and x2 are eigenvectors, this is the same as individual scaling by lambda 1 and lambda 2, and this is a result you can look at this matrix alternatively as a result of the multiplication by a diagonal from the right-hand side. So we do have a semi-diagonalization in this case. However, we do not have complete diagonalization because this P matrix, it's not even square matrix, let alone, let alone the request to invert such a matrix. Because P is not a square matrix in this case, you don't have the inverse and that's why you do not have diagonalization.